There's really no way to comprehensively explain a guitar player's style in a podcast, but what I'd hope to do with this is give some beginner blues players some tips on um, just how Albert King gets his guitar sound and, and some of the um, stylistic approaches that he has. The first thing that you want to understand about Albert King is that he actually played his guitar left-handed and upside down. So just as if I were to take this right-handed guitar and turn it um, to a left-handed without rearranging the strings at all. So what that meant was with Albert King's um, guitar, he was, if you kind of imagine this was uh, in a left-handed scenario, the high E string, the skinniest string, would actually be on the top, and the low E string, the heaviest string, would be on the bottom down here. Um, so what actually happened was he would effectively yank the strings down with his fingers. Um, and that gave him some options that are a little bit difficult when you're trying to actually emulate that sound um, on a standard strung guitar. Simple enough if you're playing in G, like a G blues scale here, to take, let's say, the C here at the 8th fret and bend that up a whole step. And on his guitar, since he would be yanking it down, that would mean his third finger would be pulling down like this. But what he could also do is take the first finger and actually pull this B flat down. And that would be just as easy to kind of yank that down, or pretty easy. To emulate that, you literally have to take your first finger here and push it up, which is a little bit tricky. That's one of the key things to Albert King's sound is to get that kind of... that first finger bending that, um, in this case, the B flat and the G blues scale. So you can imagine all the little idiosyncrasies that would go with having a guitar that's actually strung upside down. A couple of the other things um, that are really huge to his sound is the fact that he played a flying V guitar um, with relatively heavy strings. And in many cases, he actually tuned his strings down, even as low as C in some cases, from E. Um, and that would allow him to, to um, do those kind of extreme bends. I mean, more than any other guitar player, Albert King is known for his bending. Um, whereas B.B. King might be known for his phrasing and different tone things, um, Albert King really was the king of bending blues bands, and he would do all sorts of wild um, bends up a whole step and beyond and everywhere in between. So if he was going to take that note, the, B, um, the C to the D there, he gets some real funky kind of um, you know, technically out of tune, but um, great in terms of blues uh, kind of bends. And just the approach, just the, the strength of his hands. He was a big guy, had big hands, heavy strings, heavy guitar. This guitar's got tens on it, so it doesn't really represent the, uh, the heavy string sound too well. But um, if you had heavy strings, let's say 11s or, or even higher um, on your, your guitar, and it was um, tuned down a bit, it actually wouldn't be that tough to bend, but you'd get a big sound out of it. The other thing is the fact that he would use his hands to pick the strings. Many times his thumb or he'd kind of yank with his first finger. Um, so you get a... That kind of plucked sound with the thumb. That kind of plucks sound. He also um, tended to use a lot of reverb. One of the things that I noticed um, listening to Albert King, a lot of Albert King, is that he tends to play those real slow blueses or um, some real funky up-tempo blueses um, with kind of a bounce to them. And, and um, sort of seems like it's one or the other with him, um, which is both a great sound, but it's really a different sound among his playing. Aside from playing his guitar upside down and backwards, uh, probably Albert King's second most unconventional habit as a guitar player was the fact that he played through solid state amps most of the time. And for blues guitar players, especially tube amps and vintage tube amps are the norm. Um, and with this J Roland Jazz Course 120 that you're looking at right now, it's a very clean amp. This is actually the amp that he tended to um, favor. He played through a few different solid state amps, but this was the one you see him most often playing through. Um, and when you crank this amp up, it is 120 watts of solid state power, so it can get pretty loud. And it does have some power behind it. It's got two 12-inch speakers. But the thing about it is the fact that he was playing a flying V with a humbucker. Um, so by the nature of his guitar being a high output guitar, it had a lot of power behind the guitar, and of course his playing had a lot of power behind it too. It actually um, sounded really uh, great through this amp. So you get the flying V with the bridge pickup on. Um, that's another thing too, is he tended to use mostly the bridge pickup, so you'd have that real bright
just that kind of real, um, I wouldn't call it screechy. It had a real bright kind of tone that really cut through. Um, and it's kind of cliche to say, but it really made the guitar cry. That's that sound of uh, that crying blues guitar is kind of really the, the main thing with his tone. And um, finger picking, if you want to try playing upside down and backwards, that's, um, that's up to you. But that's really a huge part of the sound. And just the fact that he was the kind of guitar player that, you know, just sort of didn't play by the rules in terms of his own approach. He sort of did everything you weren't supposed to do in terms of just picking up the guitar and playing it the wrong way, technically. Um, it's a surefire way to get a unique sound out of the guitar if you kind of approach it a little differently, or in some cases a lot differently than the standard norms. So that is the a uh, little bit about the style of Albert King. Fret up a whole step. Eleventh fret on the first string, thirteen on the second, and then eleven eight on the second string. Bending the tenth fret up a whole step. The idea is to get with this phrase, from this upper position of the C scale, the C blues scale, into this eighth fret position. So he always does a little. What can she be 